Don't have much time to cook? Well, here are five single serving dinners that you can make in under 20 minutes. These dishes come together quickly, are made with easy to find ingredients, and they taste absolutely delicious. Just like you, I am tired at the end of the day, and sometimes the last thing I want to do is spend a lot of time in the kitchen preparing a meal. Well, I've come up with my favorite go to 20 minute meals, and I'm so excited to share them with you today. Our first recipe is a single serving version of a classic French dish dish. One chicken breast or thigh is cooked in a velvety smooth and creamy mustard tarragon sauce. You can serve it over rice or pasta or enjoy it as is. Here's what you need. In a 10 ounce skillet over medium heat, melt one tablespoon of butter. While the butter is melting, cut one five to six ounce boneless skinless chicken breast into one inch cubes. Sprinkle the chicken with a quarter of a teaspoon of kosher salt and an eighth of a teaspoon of black pepper and add the pieces of chicken to the pan. Cook the chicken pieces for about six minutes, flipping them over to brown all sides until they're cooked through. Transfer the chicken to a plate and cover with foil to keep warm. Add a half of a cup of heavy cream to the skillet and use the tip of your spatula to scrape up the delicious brown bits from the pan. Stir in one teaspoon of Dijon mustard and a half of a teaspoon of dried tarragon. Cook over medium low heat, stirring constantly until the sauce thickens slightly, which takes about five minutes. Taste the sauce and add additional salt if necessary. Add the chicken back to the pan and stir. This mustard sauce is just so incredibly delicious. If you'd like to make a little extra sauce, just double the ingredients. Pour over cooked rice or pasta and enjoy. This is so good. The chicken is tender and juicy. I love the sauce. It's so rich and creamy. With a hint of the Dijon mustard and the tarragon, it's excellent. This is a great single serving dish. In addition to the five single serving recipes, we've got a special bonus recipe for you at the end of the video that you won't want to miss, so stay tuned for that. Recipe number two, vegetarian chili. This easy recipe will be a favorite of both meat eaters and vegetarians alike. I love that this dish is completely customizable. Here's what you need. In a 10 inch skillet over medium heat, heat one tablespoon of olive oil. Add a half of a cup of chopped onions and a half of a cup of chopped red bell peppers and cook stirring occasionally for two minutes. Stir in one clove of minced garlic, a half of a teaspoon of kosher salt, a half of a teaspoon of cumin, and a quarter of a teaspoon of red pepper flakes and cook stirring for an additional minute. Add one 14 or 15 ounce can of diced tomatoes, a half of a cup of canned garbanzo beans or chickpeas that have been rinsed and drained, and a half of a cup of rinsed and drained red kidney beans and bring the mixture to a boil. Once bubbling, reduce the heat to low and simmer for about 15 minutes. Again, this dish is totally customizable. Use ingredients you already have on hand. If you don't have garbanzo or kidney beans, use black beans or white northern beans instead. Also feel free to add in any seasonal vegetables to your chili. Spoon the chili into a bowl and you can top it with shredded cheddar cheese or sour cream or sliced avocados if you'd like. Mmm, really, really good. The red pepper flakes add a nice heat to the chili. It's not overpowering, it's not spicy. It's really mild but delicious. And the beans are such a great source of protein in this vegetarian chili. Recipe number three, sheet pan salmon. This entire dinner bakes in the oven in one pan and comes out ready to eat in about 15 minutes. One salmon filet is topped with garlic herb butter and baked alongside asparagus on a single sheet pan. It's an efficient, hands-off way to make an intensely satisfying meal. Here's what you need. Heat the oven to 425 degrees Fahrenheit. In a small bowl, stir together one tablespoon of softened butter, a half teaspoon of olive oil, a quarter teaspoon of kosher salt, an eighth of a teaspoon of black pepper, and an eighth of a teaspoon of garlic powder. You want to use softened butter so that you can mix the seasonings in it easily. Just leave the butter on your counter for about 30 minutes and it should be soft enough. Set the bowl aside. Wash seven to eight thin asparagus spears under cold running water to get all of the dirt and grit off of them. Pat them dry with a towel. Cut off the tough ends of the asparagus by lining them up on a cutting board and with a sharp knife, cut off the end where the stalk turns from white to green. 
Place the asparagus on the baking sheet and toss them with a half of a teaspoon of olive oil. Spread out the asparagus in one layer. Lightly coat the opposite side of the baking sheet with about an eighth of a teaspoon of olive oil and place one four to five ounce piece of salmon skin side down on the oiled area. Spoon the softened butter mixture over the top of the salmon. Bake for 10 to 15 minutes depending on the thickness of the salmon. You'll know when your salmon is done when it flakes easily with a fork. You can also check the fish for doneness with an instant read thermometer. The FDA recommends a minimum internal temperature of 145 degrees Fahrenheit, which should be measured at the thickest part of the filet. I cook my salmon to 135 because that's how I like it. I think it's perfect that way. The thin asparagus should be done within this time, but if the asparagus you use is a little bit thicker, it may need more time to cook. If so, just transfer the salmon to a platter, cover it, and return the baking sheet back to the oven and cook until the asparagus is tender. Drizzle one tablespoon of lemon juice over the asparagus and salmon after baking. I love this dish because it's not only quick and easy, but I can use other vegetables instead of asparagus. Consider using zucchini or broccoli or even carrots in your version. Recipe number four, ratatouille. Ratatouille is a tasty, humble, one pan vegetable stew made with onions, zucchini, a sweet red pepper, a tomato, and an aromatic bouquet of herbs and spices. This is another dish that's easy to customize based on ingredients you have on hand. Here's what you need. Heat one tablespoon of olive oil in a 10 inch skillet over medium high heat. Thinly slice half of a small onion and add it to the skillet, along with one thinly sliced small zucchini, one chopped small red pepper, and one eighth of a teaspoon of salt. Cook for about eight minutes, stirring occasionally until the vegetables are slightly tender. Stir in one chopped small tomato. I like using Roma or plum tomatoes because they're the perfect size. One clove of minced garlic, an eighth of a teaspoon of Italian seasoning, and an eighth of a teaspoon of black pepper. If you don't have Italian seasoning, use a pinch of dried basil and dried oregano. Cook, stirring occasionally for three minutes. Transfer to a plate and top with one tablespoon of grated Parmesan cheese. Mmm. Mmm. Really good. We have my husband, also my cameraman, Come and taste it too. Here, hun. Let me put a little bit more cheese on here. A lot more cheese? Yeah, a little bit more. Enough. Enough. Oh, this looks great. It is good. Mm. The flavors are so fresh. Mm -hmm. The vegetables and everything else. This, I could see this just going quickly, but you know, it's nice. You need this plate right here. Not feel too full. I know, right? Really, really nice. Recipe number five, shrimp fettuccine. This is a light and flavorful dish. The shrimp is cooked in butter and olive oil along with a little minced garlic and then tossed with buttery fettuccine. Here's what you need. Fill a medium-sized pot with water and bring to a boil over medium-high heat. Add two ounces of dried fettuccine to the boiling water and reduce the heat slightly. Two ounces of dried fettuccine is about the diameter of a quarter. Cook until the pasta is tender, about eight minutes or so. Drain in a colander and transfer the pasta to a bowl or back into the pot. Toss with a half of a tablespoon of olive oil so the fettuccine noodles don't stick together and set it aside. Heat one tablespoon of olive oil and one tablespoon of butter in a 10 inch skillet over medium heat. When the butter has melted, add one clove of minced garlic and an eighth of a teaspoon of crushed red pepper flakes and cook, stirring occasionally for one minute. I love the spicy flavor that red pepper flakes bring to the dish, but if you don't want your shrimp fettuccine to be spicy, just leave the red pepper flakes out. Next, let's work on the shrimp. So you'll need to use six to seven medium-sized peeled and deveined shrimp. Add the shrimp to the skillet and sprinkle an eighth of a teaspoon of salt over the shrimp. Cook for one to two minutes on one side and with a fork, flip the shrimp over and cook the other side for an additional one to two minutes or until the shrimp is pink and opaque. Remove the skillet from the heat. Add the cooked fettuccine to the skillet and top with one half of a tablespoon of olive oil and toss to combine. Transfer to a plate or a bowl and top with Parmesan cheese.
So here's a cooking for one tip. I find that keeping bags of frozen shrimp in my freezer to be a really great idea. Having these items on hand make it easy to make a wonderful meal at the end of a long day. Simply use what you need and know with confidence that by keeping these items in your freezer you can enjoy a delicious meal anytime. And now here's our bonus recipe, the creamiest fettuccine alfredo you've ever had. This fettuccine alfredo is made with ingredients from each of the five recipes shown. Cream, garlic powder, lemon juice, Parmesan cheese, fettuccine, a little butter, and some nutmeg. It's great tossed with pasta, and you can even add in some cooked chicken, shrimp, and vegetables from any of the other recipes if you'd like. Stir together two-thirds of a cup of heavy cream and a half of a tablespoon of lemon juice in a one-quart saucepan over medium heat. Add two tablespoons of butter and an eighth of a teaspoon of garlic powder and stir gently until the butter melts. After the butter has melted, lower the heat to medium-low and whisk constantly until the mixture begins to thicken, about eight minutes. Stir in three quarters of a cup of grated Parmesan cheese and an eighth of a teaspoon of nutmeg and continue to stir or whisk until the cheese has melted and the sauce has thickened even more, about three minutes. Remove from the heat and toss with cooked pasta. The sauce will continue to thicken as it sits. Taste and add an eighth of a teaspoon of salt if you feel it's necessary. So there you have it five 20 minute single serving meals plus a bonus recipe. I hope you try these easy recipes and love them as much as I do. Even though you may be tired at the end of the day, you can still enjoy a fabulous meal in just minutes. If you have a favorite quick dinner idea, please let me know in the comments below and be sure to check out these easy recipes and click below to like and subscribe. Bye for now.